What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful, tender, smoky, crunchy bark. Delicious direct heat beef short ribs. Coming up! When it comes to Texas barbecue or beef barbecue in general, it's hard to deny that the beef rib is king. It's basically fatty brisket on the bone. You get that same crunchy bark, and just like brisket, it's full of collagen, which when cooked properly breaks down into gelatin, giving you that really soft, velvety, tender bite. And when you throw a beef rib on a plate of barbecue, it's a showstopper every time. But the real reason I love beef ribs so much is because it is the easiest cut out of all the barbecue cuts to cook. There's zero butchery, no trimming required. You don't have to wrap it. You don't even have to rest it. That being said, a few months back, I did a video on how to cook beef ribs on the offset smoker, and it was fantastic. Today, we're cooking a rack of beef ribs again, and it is going to be easier, faster, and dare I say, even tastier. That's right, folks. Today, we're throwing a rack of beef ribs on the mini chud box, and it is going to be delicious. This is a rack of beef short ribs. There are three types of beef ribs you're gonna run into. You got your beef back ribs, which is essentially the baby back of the cow. It's the bony backside of the ribeye. Very delicious. Not much meat. Then you got beef chuck ribs, which are the same bones as these, except a little more up towards the chuck end. They're a little bit smaller, a little bit leaner, still very tasty. And then you've got these, the beef short ribs, sometimes called a plate rib. Nowadays, they're called dino ribs quite often. And as you can see, these are USDA Prime. I got them at my local HEB, and it's time to take them out of the package. As I mentioned, one of the best parts about beef ribs is there's no trimming necessary. A lot of people like to go through and take off this back membrane, but I'm more of a membrane on kind of guy, especially with how we're gonna be cooking these today. Some people also like to go through and take off this fat cap, and there's some good reason behind that, and that's because there's a layer of silver skin underneath the fat cap between the meat and the fat that runs pretty much all the way across. But I'm not gonna sacrifice the entire fat cap just to get rid of some silver skin, because a bark you get on top of some fat is always gonna be better than bark you get on some lean meat. That fat renders down, and really helps kind of deep fry all the spices and smoke on top. Mmm, so good. So all we're really gonna do is flip this over a few more times for dramatic effect. Then we're gonna hit it with a slather. Yet again, I'm going with my classic of hot sauce and mustard just because I have it on hand from last week's video. And we're really just adding some tackiness for everything to stick to. You could use anything to get tackiness, but if you're gonna add anything, it might as well be something with some flavor, no matter how minute it may be in the overall product. Next up, we're gonna go on with some good old fashioned chud rub. This is a very basic rub, pretty much salt and pepper with some pretty common spices found in there. Got a lot of comments about this in the last video, people asking me when chud rub is going on the website. I don't know, if you think I should start selling this, let me know in the comments below. But we're just gonna go all around, nice even coat. Some people say you don't need to season the underside of beef ribs because of the membrane, but come on, might as well. Looking good to me. Any rub you've got will work here. Salt and pepper is traditional. That's what I did in the original one. If I was gonna do that again, I would just do two parts 16 mesh black pepper to one part kosher salt. And that's really all you need, but that's pretty much what this rub is, plus some other flavors. So I think it's gonna work out just fine. Get in there nice and deep like. And again, nice even coating. We're going pretty heavy on this one. And again, that's because it's mostly black pepper. So we're not really too worried about over salting anything. And we're gonna build up a really nice bark, a really nice crust. Looking real good. Just kind of patting it on, let it stick into that slather a little bit. You never want to rub it or anything. That'll just kind of create some weird streaks. And usually I'm a traditionalist when it comes to beef, just salt and pepper, but hey, sometimes you gotta live a little, right? Never forget your edges, folks. People are always forgetting their edges. Very nice, looking good. I think it's time to fire up the pit. Oh, Jesus, oh God. One chud chimney of charcoal is usually enough to get this thing rocking up at about 300 degrees, which is where we're aiming for during this cook. Between the ups and downs, I'm aiming for a range of anywhere from 250 to maybe 320. We're cooking these pretty hot and fast, and that's because there's a big bone in there, and that's gonna help insulate the meat, stop anything from burning. It's high enough up off the coals that there should be enough radiant heat to get everything cooked without anything getting too crunchy. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go on with our beef ribs bone side down. We're going right on top of the coals. We're gonna let this thing cook for the next few hours. We'll add some more charcoal when we need to, but until then, it's time to get this thing cooking. 
and a half hours later and our temperatures are starting to dip. So I think it's time to add some more charcoal. Ooh. There's a few ways to go about doing that. You can just throw some unlit charcoal right onto the fire, let it catch naturally, hope for the best, but that makes it a little bit harder to gauge how hot it's going to be. So I've just got another chimney. This is about maybe half chimney, three quarters full. Firing up right now, and I'm gonna toss it in in a little bit. In an ideal world, we would have a burn barrel going. That way we're just burning logs down into coals. So we can just shovel them in as needed. But for a cooker this size, it's really not hard to use your chimney as a burn barrel. But on this, the uh, bark is looking real nice. It's pulling back quite quite a bit, especially for how long it's been on the cooker. Four hours later and these beef ribs are looking good. Not gonna lie though, I've had a hard time keeping the temps down on this mini chud box. This is the first day above 90 degrees here in Austin and uh, I've never cooked on a mini chud box pro in this kind of heat before, but that's a good thing because these are looking beautiful. And that is a big plump rack. <laughs> We're reading right around 175 degrees. So I'm gonna flip these over, let that meat side cook, set this bark on there real nice, crisp up all that fat, and this should be done in another hour or so. Ooh. We'll check back in in a little bit. Before we check back in on these beef ribs, I wanna thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is the Dip Shack Cookbook. As it states on the back, this is a book of dips. At the end of the day, it's nice to catch up with those you love with a bit to drink and a bite to eat, and I could not agree more. Growing up in my house, we were always a big fan of hors d'oeuvres before a meal to get the evening set off on the right foot. And if that's something that interests you, this is the book for you. With over 100 dips varying from meaty to vegetarian, seafood to dessert, there are plenty of ideas in here to spice up your next dinner party. And the author of this cookbook is one of the best people I've ever known. So that being said, support Chud's Barbecue by picking up this book down in the description down below. And be sure to tag me if you make any of the dips from this cookbook. Also, be sure to stick around till the end of the video to learn how to win a copy of this signed by me and the author sent right to your door. Five and a half, coming up on six hours later, and let's see how these bad boys are doing. Woo! That was hot. Got a beautiful crispy bark on there. Oh, the smell. All the beef juices dripping onto that fire smells. Fantastic. But the real test is all in the probe. If you can get through these with ease, then you know these bad Larrys are done. Oh yes, please. And these are reading right around 205 degrees, so I know it's time to pull them off. God, that bark looks fantastic. We're gonna pull these off and let them rest for just a little bit. And like I was saying earlier, there is no need for a long rest like you would need on something like a brisket to make these tender because there's so much connective tissue and collagen in there that these bad boys are gonna be super tender no matter what. And the best part is these bones pretty much act just like a foil boat, meaning it's protected from the bottom yet the top is completely exposed, which is gonna give us that super crispy bark that we're all after. And these, Oh, they smell so good. That direct heat flavor is coming through. And I mean, just look at them, that bark. You can't really deny it. Ooh, feels nice and crunchy. And a six hour cook on a beef rib? <laughs> I'll take that any day of the week. So we're gonna let these rest just for a little bit to come down to eating temperature around 150 degrees or so. And then we will slice right on in. Moment of truth, folks. Let's see how these direct heat beef ribs came out. Oh. Oh, I do declare. Right between the bones. Yes, please. Oh my God, that smells so good. I mean, what more do you want out of a beef rib than that? Super tender. Yes, please. Oh, so pillowy. Fat is rendered perfectly. The smell on there is absolutely insane. I think it's time to taste one of these. Let's just see how this pulls off. Oh, yup. Oh. Mm. Yup. Mm hmm. That's it. It's not smoky like your typical beef rib, but the flavor instead is more of that of like a pork steak or just rendered fat. Oh, so good. Juicy. Mm. Ow. Oh, that's a big bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. It's like brisket, but like, I don't know. There's some X factor in there. Like the, the bark feels crispier. That's indulgent. It's a lot. To say the least. Uh, luckily, like, she, it sounds weird. She's, so good. Brooke has a clam dip. Oh, so good, the mutton. You like the clam dip? Right. Yeah. 
So what's our favorite out of the three? Clam dip. Definitely I'll be the judge first. of this. Here, let me take that baby. So yes. You <laughs> yes, you may. No. All right, Evan. Oh, yeah. Let's slice in. Happy birthday, Bradley. Oh, thank you. Yay, so much. Bradley! Yay, Bradley! Ooh. That looks really good. Wow, wow, wee, wow. Oh my god. Dude, that's so hot. Oh my god. Yes. This is really good. That is uh, rich. Meat and men. And crusty. Uh, Direct beef ribs. Evan, as the uh, creator of the Krusty Bark, how are you feeling right now? I mean, <laughs> that's pretty impressive, man. I mean, it's coming off the chub box, baby. I think we need to feed it to Becca, too. What? <laughs> it's also Becca's birthday. Happy birthday to you. How is it, back? Play ball. It's delicious. <laughs> All that stuff. Oh, so juicy. <laughs> <laughs> Pee Wee Herman eats a beef rib. Let's <laughs> go. Oh my god. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to cook some direct heat beef ribs. But before we go, I want to introduce you to the author of The Dip Shack Cookbook. There's a snake in my book. Very nice. That's right, folks. Mama Chud wrote a cookbook before I did. And it's available on Amazon, and all proceeds are going to go to support Chud's BBQ. So take a look for it. I'm sure you'll put a link in the notes. There will be a link in the description. Yep, it's full of inside jokes about me and Miles and Big John, so definitely a fun read. Happy birthday, Brad. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> That's right, Mom was down uh, celebrating my birthday with me and my old twin sister, and she made several dips from this book, and they were all absolutely delicious. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know by hitting that subscribe button, and if you want to win one of these signed by me and Mama Chud, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram at ChudsBBQ, and drop a comment down below with a hashtag bootsnake, and then just let me know where you are in the world. And if you really want to get Brad a birthday present, get one of your friends to subscribe to the channel. We'd love to double it in the next week. Oh, that would be wonderful. But drop a hashtag bootsnake down in the comments below. Let me know where you are in the world, just because I'm kind of curious to see where the majority of y'all are watching from. But that being said, if you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to let me know on Instagram. Head over to chudsbarbecue.com for all pit inquiries, wait lists, and all that good stuff. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.